booktube my name is Shannon and today I am doing a book review of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by JK Rowling. Harry Potter is my all-time favorite series and I recently decided that I wanted to reread the books and make review videos for each of them. So that is what I am going to be doing today for the first book. So over the past month, I have been reading this book along with all of my other current new reads, but I wanted to reread this alongside them, and it was just such a delight as always. It's so magical to reread Harry Potter, and I realized when I reread this that I have only read the Harry Potter books one and a half times because I read them up to halfway through the fifth book when I was in third grade, and then it, it got both too creepy and too long for me at that point at that age. So I decided that I was going to put the books down and pick them up again in a few years, which I did the summer between sixth and seventh grade when I read the entire series over again what I had already read and then finished and that was the first time and the only time that I've read every Harry Potter book. However, I grew up with the Harry Potter movies because my brother was obsessed with Harry Potter and I was a little young to read them when it came out. So I have seen the movies a million times over but I was shocked to realize that I haven't actually ever reread the entire series. Anyway, I think that made rereading Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone just even more of a delight for me because I I think I know why I avoided rereading the series. It's because I was scared of not liking it as much if I reread it and was older and I know that's silly looking at it now after rereading this one but I was scared genuinely that I would not like Harry Potter as much and so I never reread the series because I just wanted to keep it as magical as it always was for me. However, I haven't lost the magic kid-like brain when it comes to reading stories like this and I still was able to fully believe that Hogwarts existed as I read this and I just I was enthralled and I just love JK Rowling's writing and I had forgotten just how beautifully she writes this series and I was just so impressed when I reread it rather than disappointed and I'm very glad that that is the case. Not that I would ever stop enjoying Harry Potter but I was afraid of that um, subconsciously and that's why I had never reread them before. Anyway, enough about all of that. I just want to talk about the book now and how much I enjoyed it. At this point in the video, I advise if you haven't read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone that you leave so that you do not get spoiled, read the book, and come back. Okay, so you've read the book. I just want to start at the very first scene with my review here. I opened up the book and read about the Dursleys being very ordinary people and I was just like oh my I just love this series so much and as soon as I started the book I was just reminded of how much I love Harry Potter I was just like wow this is so similar to the movie because what I'm doing is actually watching the movies and then reading the books to see what they missed instead of the other way around because I often forget the events of the book if I read it and then watch the movie. I just remember the parts from the movie. So I'm doing it the other way around since I've already read these books. Anyway, I did find that Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone was very well adapted to film and that was 
Um, a very interesting part of reading this story for me. Because I've already read this story and seen the movie a million times, it was interesting to see the differences from the book and the movie. However, I was surprised to find how similar they were. There are so many lines that are taken directly from the book and put in the movie, and that is so pleasing to me. The characters are also very accurate, and I just was very impressed when reading this to see how accurately the movie had portrayed so much of the story. However, there were a few scenes that were a little bit different, the order was a little bit different, and I just think there's so much more to get out of reading the book because of the writing style. And J.K. Rowling is one of my favorite authors. Obviously, this is my all-time favorite series, and I just love the way that she writes and the way that she describes things, and it was just a magical time. And for those of you who are yelling at me about Peeves because I haven't mentioned that difference from the book and the movie, I wish that Peeves was in the movie, just like everybody else, because he causes so much mischief in this book and he makes it more entertaining, in my opinion, and it shows a goofier side of J.K. Rowling, I think, when she writes such a character as Peeves into the story. He's so ridiculous and annoying, but I think he does play an important role and I wish that we had gotten to see him in the movie. One scene in particular that I really enjoyed was the scene where Harry is in his invisibility cloak and he's with Ron and they're trying to get I think this is when they're actually trying to get to the trapdoor um, where Fluffy is and get to the stone and Peeves is there and hears them and tries to threaten them that Filch is going to come get them and Harry says the bloody Baron has his own reasons for being invisible and he totally makes Peeves believe him and it's just so great and that was one scene that I was like, oh, why isn't Peeves in the movie? Because that could have been a great, hilarious scene and I feel like because Peeves was left out, a lot of the comedy aspect of this book was not there in the movie. However, overall I found the similarities to overpower the differences and it was just incredible to me to finally reread this story that I adore so much and realize how well adapted the movie was. It was also very interesting for me to realize while reading this book that Harry is actually my favorite character in the first book and he's quite underrated I feel like in the Potterhead community which is so funny because he's like the hero the chosen one the main character but I really really like Harry I always have and he's still one of my all-time favorite characters and I was just kind of surprised by that because I expected to like Hermione more than I liked Harry because as a child she was my role model. However, as I read this now, I think I identify personally a lot more with Harry and I really just enjoyed having him as our protagonist. I also just want to talk about Hagrid and Dumbledore and McGonagall my favorite adult characters in this novel. Hagrid is the first person who really introduces Harry to the wizarding world, and I think his character is so valuable, not just because of that, but he also is the one person who really moves along the plot. He keeps accidentally revealing things to the three, Harry, Hermione, and Ron, 
and he is really a catalyst for moving the plot along while still being not a superficial character and having many qualities to him. I loved the part about Norbert in this book and I was surprised to find that there was a whole scene of how Norbert got out of Hagrid's hands that we didn't have in the movie and I had totally forgotten about this, but they end up giving Norbert to Charlie Weasley's friends. And it was just such a great scene, and I wish that had been included. And I understand how books can't have every single thing and event put into the movie, especially things that aren't really consequential to the main points in the plot, but I really did enjoy that scene. As for McGonagall, I love how happy she was to find Harry being an amazing Quidditch player. And that scene of when everyone takes off from the ground and then Neville breaks his arm so Madame Pomfrey has to take him to the hospital wing and Malfoy steals his rememberal so Harry chases after him. That whole scene was so great. I love Quidditch. I just need a moment to talk about how much I love Quidditch. Seeing Harry chase after Malfoy and get it back and be mortified when he sees McGonagall and she asks him to come to her office, but then she's just like, Wood, we have found you a seeker. And I was just like, Ah, I love it. I love that part. And it was very well executed in the movie, but I really found with the Quidditch scenes, including that one and the two Quidditch games that we read about in here, I was just as enthralled and excited as I am when I watch the movies when I read those scenes in the book. And that's saying something to me. I don't play sports. I'm not like a super sporty athletic person at all, but Quidditch, let me tell you. I don't know what it is, but I just love Quidditch. I love watching it. I love, oh, I just, if I were a witch, I would want to be on a Quidditch team because I just think it's amazing. And I love watching sports anyway, so maybe that's part of where this stems from. I just think it's so entertaining, but Quidditch is just a whole other level of sport. Another thing about McGonagall is that she's quite strict, and when I was a kid reading these books, when I talked to people about McGonagall, they would say, oh, she's so strict and boring and tied up and I'm like what I love McGonagall she would be my favorite professor and maybe that's a little where my Hermione comes from um I do have a little bit of that I want to be good at school I love my professors type thing that Hermione has but I just really love McGonagall. I think she has such a kind heart, especially when she gets Harry his broomstick. Uh, I just love everything about McGonagall and I think she's just an amazing character. And of course, this review would not be complete without a little statement about Dumbledore. He is just, like, he's the wise cryptic professor and headmaster, but I love the way that he says things. I think that J.K. Rowling uses the magic of words whenever he has any dialogue. It's just beautifully written and slightly confusing, but I think that makes him who he is, and I think it shows that he wants his students to be able to decipher those things and have the intelligence and the drive to push past confusion. And I just, I just love Dumbledore. He's so endearing and very, um, very, uh, just perfect. I love, I love Harry Potter. All the characters are just amazing. 
as for getting to the Sorcerer's Stone at the end of this book, I was so enthralled at the end and I was paying attention to notice any differences from the movie and the book and I noticed that there were a few. So for one thing, they got past Fluffy a lot easier, I felt like, but that peeve scene was there instead of them having the harp stop playing. And uh, Harry had gotten a flute from Hagrid, Hagrid, what, <laughs> for Christmas, and he used that to call Fluffy, and I thought that was interesting because in the movie, there's that scene where Hagrid is playing a wooden flute. Then we have the chambers that they have to go through to get to the stone. They have each of these different tasks that they have to do. And I noticed one that was not in the movie was the troll. They skip past that part because probably because they have the scene where Hermione gets attacked by the troll earlier and they did not have Quirrell's spell as they were trying to get to the stone. Then I forgot about the bottles that were a riddle logic that Hermione had to figure out which bottle would kill you and which would let you through the fire forward and backward. Um, and I really enjoyed that scene because it was fun to try to figure out the riddle and I just really really liked that part and wish that had been in the movie. Also, does it... okay, so in the movie Harry touches Quirrell slash Voldemort and he just crumbles, but in the book Harry like faints and Quirrell gets the stone and Dumbledore has to get the stone back, destroy it, and save Harry. And that didn't happen in the movie, and I thought that was very interesting how the end was slightly changed. Overall, this reread, I gave five out of five stars to Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I very much enjoyed rereading this, and I can't wait to reread the rest of the books, and compare them as well to their movies. Also, sorry if I sound sick in this video. I am getting over a summer cold and it's very frustrating because I can't breathe and I'm all stuffed up, but that's okay. Still filming. I will get better and better. It only is up from here. Anyway, that's all for this video and I will see you next week with a new one. Bye! Because I've read it so many times before, lies. Overall, however, I, oh, that's my timer for the garden. Gotta go turn off the water.